Crop Cartel Media, man, we got a very special guest to bless the platform, man. We got Darion Don in the building. What's that word, my boy? What's going on, corporate, man? You know, this has been long, long overdue, so we finna get right into the nitty of the gritty, my boy. Mm. And yeah, if y'all ain't subscribed yet, man, make sure y'all click that subscribe button on Corporate Cartel Media. Come get y'all an interview, man. Man, my boy Darion in the building. Man, I ain't gonna lie. Ooh, it's the Don. What's that <laughs> word, my boy? On the real. Man, yo, I've been um, I've been working so much, man. Just trying to trying to get everybody eating, get everybody, you know, in mold. We in mold, man. Like we doing everything, mm. taking over everything, every platform, music, producing, anything that we can be a part of, comedy, doing it all, man. Mm. Let's start at the, at the beginning. Like, you know, you born and raised in Chicago? Yep. All right, give us some background. Like, uh, how you grew up? Like, what was your, your, um... My upbringing. Yeah, upbringing. How was, how did, yeah, type shit. Um, we grew up, my family is from out west. All of my family, my mother's side and my father's side. Hmm. Um, I grew up mainly in, um, off of Lemoyne and Massasoit. Hmm. So that's kind of, that's like, that's deep. It's deep on the yep. west side, you know, since L-Town. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, we didn't, um, like, we. I grew up in a family, in a household of, like, 16 people. Mm. So, we all, like, made it work. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, I, I grew up around all my cousins. You know what I'm saying? I, I had a nice, like, you know, everybody had each other back. You know what I'm saying? We had a really um uh a family or I had a family oriented background. You know what I'm saying? Uh we all had to be in the crib before the lights was out, you know what I'm saying, before the lights hit outside, you know. Um I mean mainly I ain't gonna cap, bro. Like we really I really stayed out of trouble, man. I stayed out of a lot of trouble just um having older, you know, uh like I grew Boy, up, Harry, you, yeah, yeah, I definitely grew up in a two-parent household, household. Um, my father was a vet, an army veteran, um, at one point I remember living in, a, in Alaska, I used to live in Alaska where, where my sister was born, because my father was stationed there in the army, um, and that was probably when I, when I was like three, I also used to live in Seattle, so like from so many, from like Two to like four, I was living in a whole bunch of different places. I can't remember all of them, but um, like after after four, we came back to Chicago, and I grew up in Chicago from like four to like twelve. Mm. You know what I'm saying for sure. So you grew up in Iraq for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Like that's, that. Yeah, that's when I was living in Out West, man. I went. I actually went to um, I actually went to uh. Like grade school at Milton Brunson. Milton Brunson, um, like it was like a pri it's it's kinda like a private school. But sure. private school type shit. Yeah. All right, so uh I ain't gonna lie, so what was two ninety like like you you I ain't gonna lie, when I met you, I met you through FBG Butter, so I know you be out south, I know you be out in the trenches. Yeah. And, and I ain't gonna lie, 290 the trenches as well. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They say they, they get wide in the out south right now, that's what they saying. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't never really kicked it out there like that, but I know that that's the lingo. That's what people saying. Yeah, um, 290, man, I ain't gonna cap, bro. Um, back when I was younger, like, it was kind of bad, but, like, it wasn't, like, shoot. Like it wasn't people wasn't shooting, it was just like a whole bunch of fighting. You know what I'm saying? That's all it was out like out two ninety. But as I got older I started realizing like how much like out west was like not like out south. You know what I'm saying? Like out south is like they killing motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Out west they just wanna get some money. You know what I'm saying? So it was a really it was really a lot of that shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Like my family, like my family, uh you know, we was, I ain't gonna care, bro, like, we, as, 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 like, as I was, like, growing up with my family and shit, man, you know, 
I, I remember a lot of times when it was like, oh, we fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, like, if one of our cousins or one of my cousins came to the crib, was like, oh, this, this, and that, he was all outside. We was all out there getting ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? So, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad because, like, I kind of just looked at it as, like, oh, we just sticking up for our family and shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, as far as, like, gun play and shit like that, it was never really that. I think the first time... I really experienced like something happened was like when my cousin's own father got killed by the police. Yeah. Like he got killed by the police out out west and um uh like they was beating on him. He was um they broke his neck, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, we kinda we we all took a big major L from that, you know what I'm saying? And um that was kinda like some of like the uh, the violence that we was kind of dealing with mm-hmm. out west, you know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. really dealing with the police, and um, you know, just like the neighborhood shit. You know, when we when we heard gunshots, everybody had to go in the crib. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When we heard gunshots, everybody had to get down. You know what I'm saying? Get away from the windows, go in the room type shit. You know, so that was kind of like how my upbringing was out west. But other than that, like. It was pretty. It was pretty chill. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't really deal with so much. I ain't deal with so much as I, when I was younger. I really kind of dealt with things more when I was like older. You know what I'm saying? For like, sure. like, how old was you was when your uncle when that happened with your uncle brother? Yeah, I was like six or seven, man. When my uncle got killed by the police. Yeah. Yeah, they was like tussling with him, and um, like they dropped him on his neck, broke his neck. Damn. So. You know, uh, my cousin, um, you know, they, of course, they went through the whole lawsuit. They got paid from, you know, the police negligence and stuff like that. But that was, I, just me personally, that's something that I remember that was like, like a form of violence where I was like, damn, like, shit really happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got shit that's really happening out here. And um, it wasn't necessarily from street violence. That was something that was just within the system. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. um, I think I think we all kind of like it was it was a it was an L for us, but you know we all we won off the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it was it was it was police brutality. You know what I'm saying? We were able to like overcome that, stand above that. So like our whole family. Our whole block knew us. They knew us. They knew my my my, my great grandmother Gammy, which was like the owner of the house that we was all staying in. So like our whole block knew us from just like situations like that. You know what I'm saying? That well that situation personally. Yeah. And then um of course like it's sixteen of us staying in one house. You know what I'm saying? A duplex. So it's like a downstairs and a and a upstairs. And then motherfuckers were staying in the basement and shit. So we just had a whole bunch of motherfuckers living with us at the crib. Yeah. So would you say you came from poverty, like in the in the, in, the, in the hood, or was it more no it, sixteen in one house? Like how many bedrooms was it like? It was I ain't gonna cap, bro. Like me, and my me, and my mother, and my little sister all shared a room. Okay. And then it was like three other rooms in the house, and then the basement, and then upstairs was like three other rooms in the crib. You know what I'm saying? And everybody just had their own like you know their own space. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it, I I don't want to say poverty because like we wasn't broke. You know what I'm saying? We just, we was just packing that bitch like Mexicans, folks. I ain't gonna count. Like, we yeah. was in that bitch like Mexicans. Like, we was just coming, all coming together to make it work. You know what I'm saying? As a family. So, that's kind of like how I look at it. Now that I look back at it. For sure. For sure. So, when you, you say you were six or seven when that incident happened with your uncle, like, how was you, how, uh, how did that, how did that affect you personally? Like, you know what I mean? Growing up, you seeing that, did it, or if it did, you a young boy, so did it affect you? Um, Not really, I didn't understand it. I just, I remember how the house was. You know what I'm saying? Like the house was real quiet. It was real like Sonder. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, but we, we all took it kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? We took it real, real hard, but like as I mean, as a kid, I can't really recall having like too many emotions for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't really recall having too many emotions for it. I just remember that, like my big my big cousin was just like he had everything. You know what I'm saying? Like he had everything because of that situation. You know what I'm saying? Like I looked up to him because 
like he shared he shared everything he had with all of us you know what i'm saying like you know the money that they got like he had new video games everybody playing his video games type shit you know what i'm saying like that's that's what i remember you know what i'm saying like my big cousin sharing like his wealth you know what i'm saying and, and like what he had with us because all of us didn't have it you know what i'm saying we yeah. didn't have it you know what i'm saying so it was that's what i remember i, I kind of remember like the good and the positive that came from it but like like i said like as i'm older now i kind of realized like damn like he really did take an l like and my big cousin took an l you know yeah. what i'm saying so oh, I said your uncle was your big cousin. I yeah. apologize. I'm, I'm no, 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 no. My uh, that was my that uncle. That was your uncle, but your big cousin yeah. the one that took the weight for the family. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I want her. I'm walking with you. I don't walk with you. Then I thought I misspoke. All right. So then um, beyond that, you say it was both parents in the household. Yeah. Um. So at this at this point at this point, my father my father and mother were separated. They were separated. Mm -hmm. So like I was living with my mom's at a point. And then I was living like near Melrose for a certain period of time with my grandmother. My grandmother was living like, you know, in like the west suburbs. Mm. So I was living with my grandmother going to school with her. And um, that's when I kind of like, I was like back and forth through my grandmother and my mother's house. Mm. Like being out west with my mother and my grandmother. And then... Um, like my father got remarried. My father got remarried, so I had a stepmother. I had a stepmother, and um, that's when I started living in like a two parent household. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was living with my mom for so long. After like we moved out out the west side, we was living in like Schomburg or some shit. Mm -hmm. When, like I want to say, like in my like second grade, second third grade, I was living in Schaumburg with my mom, and then I moved with my father, and uh, then he moved us out to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was living with my stepmom and my father, type shit. Mm -hmm. And then my father and stepmother moved out; they moved back to the city, and then they moved to Indiana. Mm -hmm. So. I've been kind of, I've been in I've been in the Midwest a pretty pretty long time. I was I was living in Mississippi for like two years. Okay, two so you years. Moved around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was moving. I, I moved. I definitely moved around. Like so, you seen bit. some shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's different. It's all different. It's different in Mississippi. It's different in Indiana. It's mm -hmm. different in the city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, you know, my mom always stayed in the city. Mm. So I'm always at my mom's crib. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like every weekend I'm at my mom's crib. Besides when I was living in Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? When we moved back to Indiana, I'm at my mom's crib every weekend. You know what I'm saying? Moving around, doing shit. So we were speaking about you growing up out west. I met you out south. Now, one of the biggest, I don't want to call it a misconception because I think it's a fact, but they say like out 290 again. Wow, way more than... Out south, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They getting a little, they it's a little wild out there, you know what I'm saying? The the Austin area and shit yeah, like Austin. that. Yeah, yeah, that that changed. It changed mm -hmm. a lot, man. It changed from when you grew up. Yeah, yeah, from when I Elaborate. was growing up there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> like, okay, so like my background on my father's side, like my family is VLs. All right, cool. So, um, on my father's side. My family all VL from my west, and um, my great uncle was the leader of the IVLs, which is like insane vice lords. And of course, you know, the insane vice lords ain't really they not around no more. They don't do, you know, what I'm saying it's just vice lords. But his name was um, Del Verdes, and like my background for my background how I was raised was I never I never picked that up. I never picked up like being a vice lord. I never was like, like my family tried to keep me out of that shit. So I want to say when I was like 24, this is when I went homeless. Mm -hmm. When I went homeless, I ain't had no place to sleep. I was just fucking sleeping on the train, on the red line, going back and forth, going as long as the red line would take me. 
sleeping, hopping off the train, hopping back on, sleeping. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my homies from out south told me I could come stay with him in a trap. Mm-hmm. And he GD. So at this time, like, I'm a new trying. How old is you about this time? Okay. I'm 24. Okay. Right. At, when I was 24, I was a new trying. Mm-hmm. I, ain't, I ain't have no, like, real gang ties at all. Mm-hmm. And um, my homie, he was GD. He picked me up. Like, he was just like, come stay with me in the trap, bro. He was like, you know, he was like, I know I ain't got much for you here, but, you know what I'm saying, you just never know what can happen. You know what I'm saying? You can sell drugs, whatever we got to do to just kind of like put money in your pocket. And this my big, this my big homie. Mm-hmm. So I stayed in the trap for two years. I stayed in the trap for two years. He taught me all my laws. Mm-hmm. He he brought me around all the big homies. He was bringing me around like motherfuckers from like from from like seventy first. Mm-hmm. This is how I got in tune with like everybody. This is how I, like he brought me in tune with everybody. He was a producer. His name J Benjamin Bucks. He brought me into with everybody, and, and he wasn't just like cool with just the GDs. He was cool with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I'm meeting a whole type, a whole different type of like, like, you know, every. I'm just meeting everybody. You know what I'm saying? At one point, I remember um, meeting Kenny Mac. Kenny Mac, um, of course, he like. I think I think he is BD. I think he was like one of the little dirt like younger motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. So. Like we was, he was producing for a lot of motherfuckers. I'm just getting in tune with everybody. But what what really made me stick to being a GD was that, like, what he taught me, my laws, my P's, you know what I'm saying, bringing me around big homies. They teaching me like, like basic statues, you know what I'm saying, and um, that's that's where I picked up. Um, having like that 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 growth and development background. Mm, for sure. Like I never wanted, I never wanted to be a gang banger. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to know what I, would, what could elevate me. You know what I'm saying? How to progress? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. could elevate me? What could teach me? What could show me how to become a better man and a better person? Mm-hmm. And that's how I picked it up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was never like oh, I'm gonna be out here in the streets game banging and shooting that motherfuckers it was about me like okay i'm homeless i have nothing but these but but the gds was the ones that wanted to pick me up you know what i'm saying they wanted to pick me up and they saw that potential in me you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so they taught me and then they gave and then they gave me those laws and those statutes to teach me and show me how i could be a better you know what i'm saying i could be a better man Mm -hmm. and um that's 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 when I picked that shit up. So I don't, I can't I can't say like you know my whole life I've been GD. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I ain't been GD my whole life. Mm-hmm. I picked that up when I was down and out, mm-hmm. and and I can't lie like everything that I was taught elevated my mind so much that it was just like I just wanted to know more. I started mm-hmm. learning more. I started being around like the big homies like. Larry Hoover Jr. and you know what I'm saying e- e- like all the old heads, all the old heads. Started like embracing me, you know what I'm saying? So, so you throw elbows with them niggas. Yeah, right? like the yeah. real them guys, the I ones, them guys. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah. ones, the ones that yeah. put this shit in place. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, I just embraced it. I embraced it so much. You know what I'm saying? I'm 30 now, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm 30 now, so I like I can't I can't say like oh I I have. Like I had like major ties in it because like I said, like my family VLs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for me, it was like, damn. And I'm not I'm not trying to be like funny or anything, like, but this was really what my way of surviving. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna just be G D so I can like be cool with motherfuckers. I was like being G D so like I could survive. You know what I'm saying? Having certain connections with motherfuckers. I saw the the strength and the power that it was giving me, and allowing me to be in the same rooms with some of these major these these major old heads. You know what I'm saying? So, I just started showing my respects, and I started learning, and I started like presenting myself as such. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, I respect it. So 
you, you mentioned that you was you were hom you was homeless at the point you mentioned that. So um, what led to that? If you could elaborate, if if, if you wish, you know what I'm saying? yeah. Um, I was I was living in Dallas for a year. My mom had moved out to Dallas from Chicago. Mm -hmm. I was living in Dallas for a year. Not even a year. I can't even say that. Like six months. And um, I was working at Amazon, you know, just stacking up. I had moved to, I had moved from Chicago to Dallas because I'm like, I just don't want to be in Chicago no more. Mm. And my mom um, told me I'd come, come be with her, come stay with her. So I started stacking up, getting my bread together type shit. I ended up getting me an apartment out in Dallas, in Fort Worth, Dallas. And um, my mom ended up going homeless. Like, she couldn't pay the bill. Like, she couldn't pay the bills for real, for real. She was fucked up, and they kicked out. So, I had, like, my rent and shit paid up for, like, four months. After I moved out of her spot, I got an apartment and paid my shit up for four, five months. And I told my mom, I'm like, I was there for, like, three months, literally, just on my own. And um, when she went home, I just gave her my apartment. Mm. So... I told her, I was like, man, I had a one-bedroom apartment. It was big as hell, but I was like, she had my little brother and sister with her, so I couldn't have my mom sleep in the hotels and shit. Mm -hmm. So I told my mom, I was like, um, yeah, at that point, man, we were just trying to do anything, man. I was trying to do anything for real, for real. Like, I'm chasing my, chasing my music career. I was chasing it in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? I was doing pretty well, but... Like, I just kind of, like, took the energy that I got from Dallas and brought it back to the city. Wow, wow, woo, woo. Mm. And, um, yeah, that's when he when he kicked me out. I ain't had no really, I ain't really had no place to go. Yeah. So I was sleeping in my car. I had a car that I was, like, that I drove from, like, I mean, Texas back to Chicago. Mm. I was sleeping in my car. It's when I met, like, when I met my shorty. I want to ask you a question with that. Like, how long, how uh, how old was you when you was homeless? When you went, when that happened with you? Um, yeah, like like twenty. I was twenty four. Okay. So I, like this all this all. That's when you went to live with folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I started, when I went to go live with 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 folks. I bet. Out on seventy first. Uh, so you you said you paid the rent for your OG at the time and uh, made sure you and her and your little sister were straight. Like, how did you do that? Would you you grew up on the west side, out west? So I know that. You was you were born hustling. You got some type of yeah. hustling spirit. So how did that work? No, that really that was all off of Amazon, bro. Mm. So working, I, working yeah, job, yeah, just working, working job. Yep, yeah, I was just work. I worked a nine to five, bro. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I stacked up. I stacked up hella bread. You know what I'm saying? I think I I want to say like I stacked up like five or six bands off of Amazon, and mm -hmm. I just paid up. I, I I got my apartment, and then I paid up my rent. Mm -hmm. So and she and she had my little brother and my and my little sister. Mm -hmm. So when I was when I gave her the apartment, I was just like, man, y'all can just y'all stay here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, I'm gonna go back to the city. You know, my, my mom was trying to get me to stay. She's like, we can we can do this. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we can do it together. And I'm just like, no, nah, I can't stay here. Like I ain't come here to like move with you and then move back with you. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather you just be more comfortable mm -hmm. and then you know you just do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so. Yeah, I, when I was sleeping in my car and shit, you know, that's when I met my lady. And um, that's when I, I locked in with Track Surge. Track Surge. If everybody know who Track Surge, man, Track Surge recorded. Record everybody in the city. Like from Chicago. Yeah, Track right. Surge, man. He recorded Duck, Dirk, all of them niggas. He, Keith, he recorded everybody that you would think in the city. Mm -hmm. I locked in with Track Surge, and I started recording music with him. I recorded, I want to say like four or five songs with him. Mm -hmm. After I started recording music with him, my shit started buzzing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But at this time, I'm still sleeping in the car. So um, I remember, man, I remember I had just recorded a song with him and I went to go shoot a music video downtown at the lakefront. I shot the video with my cameraman. I, I went to go, I went to the crib and then I went to go take him home. Mm -hmm. Boom, my motherfucking car, my car engine blow. Mm. I did not get an oil change, folks. So I lost, I lost my car. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I don't have anywhere to sleep. Mm -hmm. My bitch was like, 
she was trying to like have me like in the crib with her and shit like that, but her mom was tweaking on me. So that's kind of what led me to like. Go ahead. I want to ask you a question. I want you to finish your story, but I want to ask you, ask you a question because you say you were staying with folks. You're a big homie. Yeah. What changed with that? And then going to. Yeah, know. yeah. Okay, so this was before that. All of this, all of this was before I met my big. Well, not my met my big homie, but my big homie told me I could come stay with him. Hmm. So before that, this was this was what was always happening when I like right before I went homeless. Yeah. When I lost my car, I was sleeping. I was like with my bitch and her, her baby, like her moms. I was staying with her moms and shit. Mm-hmm. And um, like her moms was tweaking on me, talking about I couldn't stay and shit. I ain't married to her her daughter and shit like that, so I couldn't stay with her. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? It just, it lasted for a little while, but whole time this is like when I was sleeping on the train I think I, I want to say I slept on trains and shit for like two three weeks mm. two mm. like two three hard weeks like my girl would let me come in the crib and take showers when her mama dipped out for work so like I was kind of like just outside mm. like every day this was in the summertime when I went home so I'm just outside every day downtown trying to figure some shit out mm-hmm. at this point um what was your mindset when you were going through that, brother? What Man, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like giving up. Yeah. I feel like killing myself mm. because I had never been. I had never been homeless. Mm-hmm. I'm 24, so at this time, like, I didn't want anything from my father, and my mother, she couldn't give me anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I gotta try to figure this shit out on my own. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't mind going through it because. Like I felt like God, this was what God was trying to like get me to go through. Without without that part of without that struggle in my life, I wouldn't be here today. Mm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I wouldn't be as high as I am, social media wise. Mm-hmm. You know, successful like success wise. Without any of it, without any of that, I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, so we, I I was really low. We gonna hit on all that, mm-hmm. but I just for sure I want to get the mindset and. I want to get the for sure. I want to, I want to get the mindset, and then I want to get how you spoke on um just you say you worked a job to you know uh, progress your like progress your dreams. You had a dream, you had to progress yeah. it. So it's like you just get out the mud type shit. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, cause the youth gonna watch this. The youth is in tune with my platform. It's like young motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying. So I want you to get them to look, bro. It's cool to work a job. It's cool to run your bag up, yeah, G, yeah. and figure it out. No, I never, I never you know down, I never down a man for working a nine to five job. Yeah, yeah. It ain't nothing wrong with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because shit, if you want something to happen, you know what I'm saying? Gotta make you it happen. Gotta make it happen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And shit, like let's be real, our dreams aren't funding our lifestyle right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. well, that's what I'm thinking. Unless your dreams are funding your lifestyle, then. You're you're gonna have to find some way to make that money to do the things that you want to do to make your career move forward. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, people think it. it I'm, I ain't gonna lie. Like the industry say, it costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars to make your career. Bust. To make a hit, they say. Yeah. To make a hit. You know what I'm saying? But me going through the grind and the and the dirty work and the mud, it don't cost that much, man. I ain't gonna lie. It costs you like. Five to ten thousand dollars for real, for real, to make your career blow. To get it rolling, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Around this time, because social media is so wide, you know what I'm saying. You could spend, you know, two, three thousand dollars on interviews with the right people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You can go do some of these platforms that's like that show that showcases your talent, making your music blow up. You know, it's a lot of things that you can do to become who you want to become. It don't take. Being in the industry and having two hundred fifty thousand dollars to make yourself blow up. So, mm-hmm. Now one hundred up. I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna speak. Not even for you, but just witnessing your work, your progress. I don't even know your progress. I, when I said you was already lit, mm-hmm. when I met you, because when people talk about social media and shit, that's that's everybody, the young niggas' dream. You mm-hmm. got about a half a million motherfuckers on your shit, damn that type shit. Probably more than that. I don't know. I ain't, I know that you up that up. Yeah. Like so it's like um and then when I and when I met you, you was producer for butter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He a lit nigga in the city, you know what I'm saying? Uh uh 
However, motherfuckers look at it, folks got it. He got motion. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So, sure. and it's like, and it's like you produce it for folks. Like, I want to ask you, like, how did you meet the brother, and how did you get into music and producing? I met, I met Butter through Bodine. Mm -hmm. Bodine, um, Bodine was my brother through. Mm -hmm. uh, man, bro, we I met Bodine through Ink Dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit. Mm -hmm. And um, there's and, some lit niggas in the city the whole time. People know what they know if they. I don't want to control, but it's like Bodine lit. He got a nice little following. He produced for FBG a lot of FB, mm -hmm. cash recipes. Different people, Young Dutchy, um, Ink Dog is an artist. I know. I know who Ink Dog is. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure other people do too, so I was like, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you was locked in with them niggas, basically. Yeah, you know like, I ain't gonna lie, man. Ink Dog put me in a lot of positions to do work with, you know, un underground people and people that's in the industry that's really locked in, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, this is all a part of, like, my come up, you know what I'm saying? Like, meeting all these members, you know what I'm saying? Th this is, like I said, without any of the grind and the effort and the struggling, I wouldn't be here today to have worked with so many people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, when I when when Bodine asked me to come, he asked me to come to Waukegan mm -hmm. to come um, check out uh, Prince Studio. Uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And um, this is around the time that uh, that Duck was kind of like getting ready to sign. To uh, rap a lot. Mm -hmm. So when I went up there, when I went up there the first time, that's when I ran into Butter. Mm -hmm. Butter, Butter came to the studio. Uh, that's when I met Trigger mm -hmm. and a lot that's of motherfuckers. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I met a lot of motherfuckers that night. Um, Bodine wasn't engineering. He wasn't engineering. Actually, I had. I knew I knew how to engineer, but I wasn't being an engineer. But um, Bodine didn't have his equipment with him, mm -hmm. so he was just like, "Bro, he was like, if you want to try to make some money, you can try to make some money tonight." You know what I'm saying? And record them. And I was like, "Cool." You know what I'm saying? Whole time, like when I walked in, like ain't nobody had no beats, ain't nobody really know what the fuck they was doing. So I'm just like, "I got beats." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got beats and shit. Like I can get y'all beats and shit to y'all so y'all can rap on. And um, I want to say, like, me, Trigger, and, like, three other artists made music that night. I mm -hmm. made, like, four songs for Trigger. I made, like, six songs for Butter. Um, I made songs for Puff. You know what I'm saying? The Puff Daddy. P. Diddy. No, 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 no. That P. Diddy. That P. Diddy. Who's Puff, saying? Who's saying Puff, Puff. Puff's his own. Um, there was, like, she was, like, one of the affiliates A with female, Butter. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. sleeping on her eye for sure. Yeah, but that, that I was working all night that night. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. most of those beats that they used was my beats. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, I had went, I went back out to Milwaukee a couple more times and recorded for them and kicked it with them and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of, that's how I got locked in with Butter. You know what I'm saying? Ever since then. And I want to say that was, like, almost four or five years ago. Yeah. It was almost like four or five years ago now. So I've been locked in with Butter for like four or five years. And um that's that, that that's where everything started. That's mm -hmm. where everything started, man. I locked um Butter got locked up. Butter got locked up like in the midst of him like doing his music and kinda like coming up in his music and shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And um me and Butter had lost touch. I locked back in with Butter last year. Last year in April, I locked back in with Butter. Um, he was on house arrest, and he he hit me up on Instagram. And was like, folks, I've been looking for you, cause I had all his music. Like I had all the music that we had recorded. I had it all on my laptop, mm -hmm. and he was like, bro, I want you to send me those songs again. Wow, wow, woo, woo. We had a song called Victoria. You know mm. what I'm saying? It was, so Victoria from four or five years ago. Yeah, bro. That's, that's an crazy. old ass song, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. That's an old ass yeah. song, man. What's your secret? Yeah, yeah, right. so, yeah, and I, yeah. And shit, we, we worked on that that's song. That's crazy. Like, me and Butter worked on that song. Yeah. Like, 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 I told him I was an R&B singer, and he was like, I want you to help me do this song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when we did that song, it was like, it was raw. It was like, mm -hmm. like pure art. You know what I'm saying? It was just completely different from all the music that he had did I love in the that studio song. that night. Oh God, I'm just keeping it tight. I love that song. I know that song. Yeah. For real. Like we, 
Folks be he play his own shit. And folks told me he's like, I wrote I wrote this in jail, bro, for my shorty, bro. I really yeah. wanna put it out. Yeah. I'm like, all right, cool, let's put it together. Yeah. Like I wanna say that I was on that song. I don't quite remember if I was or if I wasn't, but we it was it was a lot of work that we did. It was a lot of work that we did in Milwaukee, man, and Prince yeah. and Bo didn't really put that in play for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To to help me um just further my like producing career. You know what I'm saying? And this was after I got my credit with FBG Duck. Mm -hmm. So after I got my credit with Duck, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is when I started, like, getting on the inside. You know what I'm saying? I started getting on the inside of, like, all the shit with, like, all the major GD motherfuckers I was making music and shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, it was, it was different. It was real different for me because I hadn't made... I wasn't like focused on being a producer. I was focused on being an artist, but producer was a producing was just a part of me as well. So I just started doing that shit and doing it for other motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Making music that I felt like this should be cold. You know what I'm saying? This should be like hot. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of yeah. how that shit got like. That's how I got in tune with butter and shit for real, for real. No, I wanted. Um, I'm writing questions. I want you talking about it. like so. Now look. Um, so you you went from being homeless to getting up with some major guys that's really got a little emotion, like and mm -hmm. and um and I ain't gonna say they gave you emotion because you sound with rap a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we we uh, rap a lot Midwest. I, we gonna talk about that. But how did you get from sleeping on the train to getting up with butting them? Was it just like work ethic? What was it? Because we wanted we want to inspire the youth as well to take a path you took instead of some of the paths that a lot of other people took. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so I ain't gonna cap, yeah. man. Like, while I'm doing all of this shit, bro, before, before, when I met Butter, I wasn't homeless anymore. Okay. So, like, I had, I was big on social media. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew me from Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, because as I was homeless, I was doing other things. Like, I, I did... You knew how to work your number. Yeah, bro. Like, I, I did Jerry Springer. Mm -hmm. I did Empire. I mm -hmm. did The Shy. I did all of this shit when I was homeless. Mm -hmm. So that boosted my Instagram and my fucking social media, like, um, my presence and platform. Hold on, wait. I want you to elaborate on that because that's going over motherfuckers' heads. You was homeless. You right. were sleeping on the train. Yeah. That, you was on Empire. Yeah. What else you said? Empire, Jerry Springer, and The Shy. Uh, now, how did you get to that point when you just you ain't even got nowhere to live at? Not, and I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. saying I'm, I want to, I want to. I was still inspire in the trap. motherfuckers. You know yeah, I, mean? I was still in a trap. Yeah. I was still in a trap when all this shit was happening, man. What but made I, you think that was possible, brother? Nothing. People, don't, people be hopeless when they in that in the situation. You nothing, in, bro. You know? I'm not gonna cap to you, bro. I had no aspirations of doing television. Mm. It was just like there. Um, when I was homeless. I remember it, and shout out to shout out to my lady, bro. She was the one that got the Jerry Springer shit for me. That was the first TV show that I was on. Mm -hmm. My lady got it for me. You know, some way, somehow, she had connections with the people that was like in the back office for Jerry Springer, trying to get like episodes out and shit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get people on episodes on TV, on television. And um, she told me she was like, um, I know it's not much, but it's good. It'll be good for your music. And they paying us like three fifty a piece. Mm, so they paid. They paid to get on Jerry yeah, Springer. They all paid right. us. Talk about so it. So I was like, all right, cool. Like we, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So they hit us up. They hit us up like within a week and was like, we want you to be on Jerry Springer. At this time, yeah. At this time, I'm still. Um, of course, I'm still homeless and shit like that. But like when. They hit us up. They was like, we want you guys to come out next week. For sure. So when they hit us up, they told us. They was like, okay, we're going to pay, pay for y'all to come out to Connecticut, which is n near New York. Mm -hmm. and, East Coast. Yeah. And uh, they're going to pay for our hotel. And we they're going to have us on the show. We're going to do our episode. Wow, wow, woo, woo. Mm -hmm. They they flew us out there. We did our episode. We met Jerry. Wow, wow. You know, it was it was real. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? They gave us bread. And um, to be honest with you, my episode didn't air until the following year. Mm -hmm. 
So at this time, I'm just like, damn. You know what I'm saying? I remember I went viral while I was in the trap. Burger King, I had went out and did a challenge for Burger King. It's like when they was doing like the 10-piece nuggets for like a dollar or some shit, or two dollars. So I had went out and bought like 100 nuggets mm. and just gave it to the homeless people out like on um, Halston in the 71st. Mm. And I went viral on Twitter. That's how it's out, though. Yeah, yeah, that's how it's out. And I went viral on Twitter and, and Burger King retweeted my shit. I still got the pictures and shit to this day. They retweeted my shit. And um, I had set a trend, and everybody started going out and buying like a hundred nuggets and just giving them to homeless people. So that was something that was like it picked up before Jerry Springer did. Damn. Like me just doing shit on social media. I was doing anything. Like I was trying to do anything to just make my situation better. Like to feel like what I was doing was the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So You're trying to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, I did Empire. Empire cast it before Jerry Springer. I was an extra in Empire. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't too major, but y'all still see my face and shit. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. Mm -hmm. Then, um, I want to say like three or four or five months went by. I'm still kind of like hustling and producing. At this time, I'm producing for Mill Ticket. DJ Mill Ticket. Everybody in the city know DJ Mill Ticket. I'm producing for DJ Mill Ticket. Um, he hit, he hit me and my boy, J. Benjamin Bucks up for packs. He's sending out the packs, you know what I'm saying, to, like, get us placements, wah, wah, woo, woo. Some of them not hitting. Some of them hitting for, like, like regular artists and shit, wah. And, uh, like, eventually, oh, yeah, I also linked in with DJ Young Tell Him. Every, if anybody knows DJ Young Tell Him, he is, like, the creator of, like, juke music mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like he was the one that made all of the the tracks that motherfuckers is remaking a day like oh i like it i like it i like it when you do it from the back from mm -hmm. the back yeah like dj young I'm young teller yeah. he was the one like he put me in my glow like mm -hmm. he put me I, I mean a lot of people put me in my glow but he put me into in, in tune with a lot of people mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like in the music on the music side like i can't i can't never like like downplay what he did for me because DJ Young tell him he wasn't even doing music for real. He was doing like his like you know cutout boards and his t-shirts, his clothing line. You know what I'm saying? He was doing that shit, mm -hmm. but he decided to do music with us just to help us out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it like I said, like without the struggle, I wouldn't know half of the people. I wouldn't have done half of the shit that I've done with motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I want to say, like, the summertime of, like, when I was, like, 24, 25. What summer is this, though? Well, yeah, you remember? Uh, it was before 2020. It was, like... Because you was in the mix. You say you was it was like twenty. Too. It was, like, 2018. Yeah. 2018, okay. 2019 type shit. Okay. And, um, fucking, that's when my Jerry Springer episode dropped. I didn't even know it dropped. How I knew it dropped was I was walking, I was walking from the trap to the corner store and everybody on the block knew who I was. Like they knew who I was because I was selling weed, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in the trap house. I'm in the I'm I'm in one of the trap houses on the block. You hustling. Yeah, that's hustling, you know what I'm saying? You hustling. Yeah. But I walked to the corner store and like some some females and one of the and one of the cribs was like, boy, I just saw your ass on TV, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what? They like, yeah, boy, your ass was just on Jerry Springer, and I'm like, you fucking lying. Whole time I, I ain't even finished going to the corner store. I ran back to the trap, and I'm like, folks, because you said, hold on, I, I want you to finish that, but because you said you shot the Jerry Springer interview a, a year before, yeah, a yeah, year before, ahead, yeah. so like. And I don't want that full year. It was probably like eight months. Right. It took like eight, nine months for my shit to air in Chicago right. or wherever it was airing at because didn't nobody know who I was personally. But when I, re I remember vividly the day that it dropped. It was the summertime of like eight months before when I went homeless. So it was like, I want to say like August of 2018 to like 
May of like 2019 or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's how I knew. Like it was, it was, it took a little while for the episode to drop. But when the when the girls was like, man, I just saw your ass on television. Man, your ass was just on Jerry Springer. I ran back to the trap. I'm like, folks, they just they. I just I I was just walking to the um the store and they was like, folks, they just saw me on television. They was like, folks, he was like, folks, the episode drop. I'm like, man, I do not know. So, old time, a couple couple days passed by. Then my family on fate. A couple days. We're gonna, yep. We said, you no, you good. Work. But a couple days passed by. Yeah, a couple of days passed by, and uh, my family started posting it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like, I had finally seen the episode. Of course, I'm in a trap, so there ain't no TVs and nothing like that for real. Anything I'm, I'm going to see, I'm going to see it on social media, on my phone. Mm -hmm. So my family started posting. They posted a little clip little snippets of the episode and I'm like, damn, like they recording it with their phone on television. So the whole time all my family just like laughing, giggling about the shit because it was like a goofy ass episode. But one of my family members had clipped me singing on Jerry Springer because I was singing to my girl because I had cheated on her with a stripper. That was the storyline. Mm -hmm. And when I sang to her, that's the clip that they put out. And that clip started going viral on Facebook. Instagram, YouTube, all type of shit. So I'm like, damn, like, now everybody know who the fuck I am on the block. Everybody, like, seen the shit, you know what I'm saying? Because I had, like, beads and shit in my hair. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew who the fuck I was because they saw me singing on Jerry Springer. Yeah. So at this point, I'm, like, living on, like, cloud nine. Like, oh, I'm like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna do this shit, bro. Like, I know I'm finna go. You know what I'm saying? Are you homeless at this time, or are you you? you I'm in the trap. I'm still in the trap. trap. You're in the trap. You're in the trap. Like I'm on the bus here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still kind of like a homeless. Oh no, no, you was homeless before that. Then you got to the trap. Then yeah. all right. So we, yeah. we just walking through it because I want I want people. What I what I'm trying to get. What I'm trying to capture is that you know it ain't. Don't give up hope. No, people, hell no. Because people, people, people gonna watch this. That's probably hopeless. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. keeping it tall. So it's like you giving them. You walk, you know, yeah, yeah, effort. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you know, gotta you give. Effort. What I'm yeah. yeah, you got. You got to be able to put some. You got to put something down, bro. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like you yeah. got to walk through whatever God got got you going through. You know what I'm saying. That's me personally. I'll tell anybody that God Talk brought me. God brought me through something that I never thought I was gonna make it out of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. When I was in the trap, bro, like not not to like shit on my homie or anything like that, but it's the trap, folks. Like we got rats, we got roaches. Mm -hmm. And we selling drugs out this motherfucker, mm -hmm. and it's only me and my it's only me and my boy living in this bitch, and we trying to make this shit work. The the heat didn't work right. There was no toilet, nigga. I was inspiration. I, I was I ain't gonna cap, bro. I was shit. I was shitting that Burger King mm -hmm. on seventy first and Hawthorne before they knocked that bitch down. Like every day, I had to go to Burger King to use the bathroom, mm -hmm. and then you know what I'm saying when. Shit, when Burger King was closed, I had to sit in the garbage can. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Gangster. Like, like it was, it was just shit that I was going through, bro. Like Gangster. I ain't gonna cap, I ain't, I ain't afraid to to let motherfuckers know what the fuck I went through because God brought me out of it. You know what I'm saying? He took me out of that shit, and I promised him that if he just took me out of it, I'll never come back to this bitch again. You know what I'm saying? Like that was my first really look into like poverty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was my first look into poverty because mm -hmm. I had never experienced it before. Yeah, yeah. But like, even yeah. when when I was listening to motherfuckers talking about being in the trap and they love the trap and shit like that, like I'm like, this can't be that. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, some I mean, maybe in some different places it's it different. Is that. It might you know be that. It might be that too. But it's like they comfortable with it. But go ahead, yeah. I'm walking you know what I'm saying? You. I wasn't. I didn't like it, bro. Because when it come from that, it's like I had shit going on. I had a yeah. little bit of structure. Now I got to deal with this. Yeah, it but was I'm different. I'm chasing my dream. It was different. It was hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Not on top of that, I'm living on 71st and Emerald. So you got to think the BDs and the GDs right there. You in Inglewood. Inglewood, bro. It's treacherous. It's they don't everybody. even talk about it like how they talk about other places, but it's like it's treacherous. Right, bro. Literally, like two blocks past Hosted, BDs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then two, black, two blocks past Emerald. The BDs. Mm -hmm. Like, they all right there. Everybody right there. GDs, BDs, you know what I'm saying? And they even had some stones out there, too. You know what I'm saying? So it was a little it was a little different. It was a little different for me because I'm like, damn, like, everybody, like, amongst each other. So it was gunshots, niggas dying. I remember when they killed Law. 
when they kill law out there. Yeah, I'm talking about the chief big law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking I about know big what that is. I know what that is. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. They killed big law after literally right after he got out of jail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the motherfuckers was hot. The motherfuckers was hot. They was ready to do anything. You know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers was ready to just go kill anything. So a lot of motherfuckers was just dying. When mm. big law got killed, I remember it was like ten or twenty motherfuckers that had got killed two, three days prior to that. I mean after that. Mm. So it was like, damn, bro, it was a lot of shit going on at the time. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of shit. So for me personally, my mind wasn't in a good it wasn't in a good place. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, bro, uh just just getting kind of back to like uh after, you know, the Jerry Springer episode shit came out. Um I, I just I utilized that shit, bro. Uh, my mom was working at it the was airline. Clout. Yeah, it Before was clout. clout was clout, like yeah. type of shit. Yeah, for Go me ahead. anyway. Walk, walk, walk. You know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm walking with you. So, uh, damn, bro. Uh, I was my mom was working at the airline, and she was getting me free flights. I had to I had to drive I had to fly standby, but I was going everywhere. So one of the places I went to was L.A. When I went to L.A., I met this dude named King Vibe. He was um he was on Rhythm and Flow. He rapped on rhythm, rhythm and flow, but this was before rhythm and flow. Mm -hmm. I met him out there on, um, on, um, ooh, San, San. Shit, I can't think about it. Listen, I want, I want, I want, I want you to come back to that. And think about it, but I want to ask you this: When you said you was out there on Seventy First and Emerald, yep, that was no Love City, or that's. Different than all, I know. I know Love City on like fifty seven, but I ain't my stretch. I don't know. What, what, what was that hood? Cause uh, people, that's I ain't gonna cap. That was. I want to say it was in the JoJo world. Okay, that's JoJo. Okay. Yeah, Cause that's, JoJo world. I thought JoJo world was more like Emerald right there, but JoJo world and them like is um. I ain't gonna lie. It's like sixty ninth and. Yep, it was like four. Uh, it was like three or four blocks. Yeah, right there. Yep. It's right there. It's right there. It was like there. three or four blocks. But the Mo's right, right there, the G's right there, mm -hmm. the BD's right there. So it's it's a war zone. Yep. Right, everybody, on. everybody there. But I ain't gonna cap though. Before before they killed Big Law, everybody was just like in harmony. You know what right, I mean? Like right, motherfuckers, right. everybody was selling drugs. Mm -hmm. It was the pill man, it was the D line, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like everybody was doing that it's shit. Money over there. You know, it was money, you know what I'm yeah. saying? They fucking with the A Rabs on the corner at the liquor store. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They fucked like everybody getting bread and shit. But when they killed Big Law, that's when shit went left. Like everybody started going to jail. They was smacking motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? They taking down the trap houses. You talking about the police? At yeah, this point, the police. Yeah, 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 yeah. They taking they taking motherfuckers down. So now it's like it's a scarce on weed. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers ain't making no money. So motherfuckers start robbing people, killing people. You know what I'm saying? It was it was just getting real bad. I'm gonna ask you a question. This to my knowledge, though. Yeah. Mm. Big Law, uh, he was the big wig over there. Yeah. Yeah. So. But he was in jail though. Yeah, he was, but he's still the big wig. Yeah, he still yeah, got yeah. His people. Allegedly, mm -hmm. people allegedly. You know, I don't, don't want to have nobody looking at like I'm on some police shit or we on some no, police no, no, shit. No, 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 no. Yeah. So allegedly, he was the big. He was the big wig. But it's like he was the structure. Yeah, I heard. I heard that the cartel killed him, and I know niggas killed him. Did you hear that before, or is it, how, I, did, how did you view it when you was in the trenches? I ain't gonna lie, bro. From over there, I yeah. ain't from over there. You, when when we heard about it, we heard it was some little niggas that killed him. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. came like he had. He was literally in a meeting about how to bring structure back mm -hmm. to the hood, and after that meeting, they killed him out in front of that, in front of the building that he was at. Mm. They they came by and killed them. What was your perspective of being over there? You were shorty. It was different for me, bro. I ain't yeah. gonna catch it. Was in the mix. Yeah, cause yeah. I, every like when it happened, we knew about it. It was yeah. like that. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we like everybody was talking about all the motherfucking BDs was talking about it. Everybody was talking about it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it was kind of like a it was a jab. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It was a jab to like everybody that was in uh, around the, the the surrounding areas because. Motherfuckers thought that some change was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. good change. Mm -hmm. Because after he got out of jail, he he was trying to do something positive. You know what I'm saying? Bring some positivity yeah. to the community. Yeah. Bring bring like some like I said, bring back structure to yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So 
Like the motherfuckers was mad. A lot of niggas was real mad when he got when they when they smoked him. See, like I was in the middle of everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it was to a point where me and my homie was just like practicing, you know, laws of attraction and shit like that. And this is how I started being able to work with both sides. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I remember, I remember, uh, like. One, one, it was this white dude that we was locked in with. He was a cameraman at the time. His name was Blue Benjamin. He, uh, he got me into like uh, a little dirt concert. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the time when like King Von had just got locked up, and it was just like Mimo was holding it down with a little dirt and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at this time, like, like anything that can happen is, is damn near happening. You know what I'm saying? Like I can be, I'm around all, I'm around everybody. You know, but I just wasn't, I ain't had no bloodshed in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like so, for me personally, I ain't really had no problems with nobody. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Where and you know, I it's sad to say that, like I kind of like pick sides. I did because. Like the motherfuckers that picked me up, you know what I'm saying? And I can't cap, bro. Even some BDs was like showing me love. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, I can't downplay what they was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like working with me. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers using my R and B shit in the background, using my beats. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, bro, I was locked in with Kenny Mac and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like I can't, I can't downplay nothing that they did for me. But it was just. Like I pick sides when, like, more more of the people that was working with me was fucking with me because of who I was, mm -hmm. and not because of like what I was trying to be. You know what I'm saying? Like they fucked with me genuinely. Mm -hmm. Like the GDs fucked with me genuinely. Mm -hmm. I felt like the BDs was fucking with me because I just had something to offer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like producing, singing, whatever the case may be. But. You know what I'm saying? When when it came to the point where, like, okay, like, who am I working more with? You know what I'm saying? I was working more with the motherfuckers that was humble, that was, like, they was willing to work with me because, I mean, not, not for clout. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, oh, this nigga coming up. You know what I'm saying? This nigga got, you know what I'm saying? Like, he got potential, so let's work with him. Mm. And that's where I kind of, I feel like I pick sides at. You know, me personally, um... Like, I never really speak on my father too much. You know what I'm saying? I don't really want to put his name out in the interviews and shit like that. But early, not to cut you off, but earlier you said you ain't know him in that wheel. So go ahead, talk mm -hmm. about it. Like, give, give us, give us to it. Like, if you want to, but I ain't, you know, to so give it. Give Wait, it what you it. mean, my pop? Yeah, because earlier you said you ain't know him in that wheel, and you say you don't want to speak about him in that wheel. That no, much. no, 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 no. I do, I do know my pops very okay. well. You know okay. what I'm saying? My pops is like, like that's that's still my best friend. Okay. Like to this day, like oh. I can call, I could call my pops at any time. I just don't, you know what I'm saying, because I don't want him to feel like I I need him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. You want to be a man. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like and like me and my pops went through a lot of like tough patches, like mm -hmm. when I was coming up. You know what I'm saying. But my pops is a very powerful man, bro. He worked with the city. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. He's gotten awards from the mayor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Working Chicago. In Chicago. Right, bro. You know what I'm saying? He, he's done a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he's he's on the board of Lil Durk's Neighborhood Heroes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's been opportunities where, like, I could have worked with Lil Durk. There's been opportunities where I could have got music with Lil Durk. You know what I'm saying? But my father never brought me into that light because... Of all of the the work that I did with Duck, you know what I'm saying with Butter, like it's it's just a lot of shit that like I did with the GDs that he felt like he didn't want to put me in a line of fire, you know what I'm saying? So without you seeing too much, it sounds like your dad was affiliated more with the BDs. He more of a not even I, I'm not I'm not gonna say right. I'm not gonna say we my gonna pop, say his name. Yeah, 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 I'm not gonna say my pops was affiliated with the BDs, but my father's a good businessman. Okay, he writes he writes programs. For neighborhoods, heroes, 
and that's what he does. My father writes programs, you know what I'm saying, to well, work Dirk, with the with Dirk, Dirk Daddy, a B, a GD, GD though. exactly, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, what I'm big, saying, big Dirk, a GD. And, and he and he's One a part of guys. neighborhoods heroes too, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But that's what 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 little Dirk is doing with neighborhood heroes is that's a positive impact to the city and the hoods, okay. you know what I'm saying. So I can't, I can't really look down upon that. You know what I'm saying? I can't look down upon my father working with Lil Dirt because, like, he that's something positive. He writing programs and 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 shit for his LLC to make his program stronger to help out neighborhoods and to help out inner city youth. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I look up to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, like but like I said, like it's been times where like my father is just as close with Lil Dirt's management and shit like that. Where he could have just been like, "Hey, my, this my son. Like, put my plug my son in," mm -hmm. but he never did it because he ain't want me to be like a, you know what I'm saying? Like he ain't want to he ain't wanted to jeopardize what he got going on, and he don't want to jeopardize me. You know what I'm saying? Like that's sure. anything that's gonna make me like like in in the line in of the danger. Predicament, in yeah, the predicament, you know what I'm saying? In the line shit, of danger, yeah. he ain't gonna put me into. So I respected that, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, you got to respect that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I always I always looked at, you know, you got to respect uh, that. Uh what I always looked at that situation, bro, I just I just kind of like it's like apples and oranges. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You just got to take which one you going to take, you mm. know? And like I said, I feel like I chose a side because at first being a neutron and being able to work with everybody I'm more in tune with the GDs mm. than I am with any other side. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I could, I you know, I, but I don't, I don't mind it. You know what I'm saying? I always rooted for the underdog. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I do feel blackballed for my work ethic and the ones that I work with more. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, we gonna get into that. But first, I want to get into you spoke on um, Lil Durk. Now, Lil Durk had an artist named King Von that probably was more accessible. Mm -hmm. Now, King Von, you know, he passed away in a tragic way um, in Atlanta or whatever. You say you rotated in Atlanta. Yeah. Now, what's your opinion on the King Von incident? Like, what happened with him and all that? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, with, with King Von, man... He, and was you able to get up with him? Cause he he was like newer with like you know what I'm saying. No, nah, no, nah, I yeah. never, I never was in tune with King Von. I was never in tune with him. Okay. I never, never met him. Never seen him. I, I mean, I met me. I met a lot of motherfuckers, mm -hmm. but I never met Von. He was too high at the time. He was too high at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, there was an incident where, like, I had I had shot a video. When I was in Atlanta, and um, like we had got into a shootout at the gas station, so like my homie that I was with looked just like King Von. Mm, damn. Like, like from out west or where you from? No, no, he from he from Atlanta. Okay, but he looked like a, he yeah, looked like but King he, Von. he looked like King Von. Like yeah. his hair was the same, like same skin color, same same skin tone. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, wait. Tats and shit. Hold on, wait. I think I seen that. Was it on, on social media went viral where y'all, yeah. like, the car got clapped at? I yeah. think I, I know I know about that. Go ahead. Oh, I want to know about that. So, like... At the gas station. Yeah, we was at the gas I station, I remember bro. that. I'm, I seen that before. Yeah. And my homie, my homie send, like, they, they shooting and they hit the car. Like, the people that's at the gas station shooting, they hit our car. So, my homie hop out the car and send like three shots out of boom 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 and then duck back down. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I'm like I was recording bitches twerking. Like the the fucking gas station lit. The gas station lit as fuck. We just left the club. Everybody came to the gas station. If anybody in Atlanta, y'all know like how it be after like the at the club. Like everybody them that go to the gas station, turn up at the gas station. The bitches twerking all type of shit. So I'm recording it. But whole time on on the other side of the motherfucking gas station motherfuckers getting into it. Mm -hmm. So they get to shooting. Boom, 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 boom. Like, er like everybody cars getting shot up type shit. So my homie get to shooting back after they hit his car. And he ducked down. So I turn the camera. I'm, it's, not, it's not purposely. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I'm recording. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just recording. Recording I'm just the hoes. Yeah. That happened. It's yeah, just, it's just all reaction. going out at the same yeah. time. So I record him, but it's like the back of his head. 
and like his arm and shit, and his arm tatted up. And Von like was tatted up, tatted up kind of like the same way. And like after I posted it, I posted it on social media and it started going viral. Mm -hmm. So whole time like this video went viral, like I want to say like four or five months prior to King Von dying. Dang. So when when it first went viral, everybody was like, it was King Von, it was King Von, it was King Von. You know what I'm saying? I tried to clear up the rumors like it wasn't King Von. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it died down. So when King Von died, people was kind of like posting up like videos and shit like that, just like of King Von in remembrance of him. So my video, my video that everybody was saying it was King Von, it was like King Von was a savage, wah, 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 wah. he was shooting at the car while his homie wasn't shooting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty, I'm the homie that they talking about wasn't shooting. Right, he was tossing, why he yeah. didn't toss the type of Right, you know what I'm saying? So at this time, like the, the song Demon was out off his album. Mm -hmm. And um, like the the song was like the video had just came out, so the whole time like a video that I had made talking about the incident went viral. They used my video, like I want to I I want to say like the industry, the label used my video to push the demon video. Damn. So so, so they made they took they hold him up. They stole your video and made it seem like it was King Von tossing. Exactly. But it wasn't, it wasn't King Von. It wasn't King Von. Everybody posted That's crazy. it. Adam 22, fucking, That's uh, crazy. fucking, what, what's the what's the other fucking shit called, man? Say cheese. Everybody, Everybody posted it. Yeah. Everybody posted the video, bro. It was That's just crazy. like crazy over viral. And, um, like every like I was taking a lot of slack from it because they like, oh, you the homie that didn't shoot this you the homie that Vaughn was talking about in the song. If you listen to the song and demon, he like, Oh, my homie didn't even shoot. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. he didn't even get out the car and even shoot. Mm -hmm. So it seemed blowing up like that demon song was blowing up like it was just going crazy the music video i just came out and my video was going viral at the same time so it was like this is the nigga that bond was talking about in the song so that that incident really i ain't gonna cap bro like i took it for what it was it was like you know what i'm saying it was a little clout for me but at the same time like motherfuckers they they, they took it for what it was. They took it for what it was, bro. Like, it died down. I want to say, like, two weeks afterwards, it died down. Wow, wow, wow. But still to this day, that same video goes viral. Every, I ain't going to say, like, every six months, that video go viral again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, I let my, I talked about it on um, DJ Small Eyes a few times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I talked to a lot of different platforms. That's a lit ass it. platform. Go ahead. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, I, I let motherfuckers know, like, it was, it was, that was never King Von, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in the mm -hmm. video. That was never King Von. And then motherfuckers looked at me differently, like, well, if you fuck with ducking them so hard, why the fuck was you with King Von? You know what I'm saying? So it kind of like put me in the middle of a crossfire, you know what I'm saying? In terms of the fans. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, and the fans and the people yeah. that, I mean, even my homies, you know what I'm saying? Then. Like, even my yeah. homies was like, damn, but I had to let my homies know, like, bro, that wasn't Von, bro. But that's what everybody was saying and shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I took it for what it was. I. I I took the cloud and and the you know the degrading of all social media and shit like that, and I just I just ran with it, you know what I'm saying? And it ultimately like took me to another place. Motherfuckers thought you know I was this and that, but whole time it was just like this and that, I know. Know. this and that, this and that. Even though this and that, yeah, motherfuckers thought I was this and that and shit like that, but whole time I'm letting motherfuckers know like. Bro, that shit was a crazy night for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, anybody could have, like, we could have lost, all of us could have lost our life at that bitch. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it, it was really just, toxic. it just yeah. happened. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was just an incident that just happened. Yeah. And, um, you know, I kind of just, I grew from it. I grew from it all, bro. No, 100, though. That's real shit, though. I ain't gonna lie, I like your story, bro. It's like a journey, and I feel like it really could inspire the youth, because some people be feeling hopeless, bro. So I feel like, 
even what you telling me, you giving me hope. I ain't, mm -hmm. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it tall. I ain't never been homeless. I ain't never been in some of the situations that you, that you describing, but just me hearing your story is like inspiring me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm knowing that an inspired motherfucker that's this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they gonna see it though. We gonna we gonna put it out there. We gonna definitely make it make it make sense. Now look though, we were talking about King Von. Um, you know, uh, uh, you you being. If it, oh, no, I was too long. You being. We were talking about King. We were talking about King Von. We were talking about you being you working with Duck and them. Yeah. Now you worked with Duck personally. Um no. Okay. When I worked with Duck, it was sent. It was like beats that was sent over. Okay. DJ Mill ticket locked that in for me. But you made the beats. Yeah, I made the uh, beat. For I sure. made the beat. It was a song called Always Have Faith. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be released on his um, newer album that his mom is dropping. Okay. His posthumous album. For sure. And bro. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, when I was, shit, bro, I was still in the trap when that shit happened, bro. When I, when we was making beats for DJ yeah. Mill Ticket, he was like, bro, send me a pack. I'm going to be in the studio with some major artists tonight. Um, he said, I just need some hard shit. But, like, the track that we sent... I mean, we sent them some trap beats and shit like that, but the track that Duck got on was like a song that I sampled my voice on. It was like a a heartfelt song. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even a trap track. Yeah. But Duck hopped on it. So two days later, DJ Mill Ticket hit us up and was like, hey, bro, y'all ain't gonna believe it. Duck hopped on one of y'all tracks. And we mm. was like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we... Excited we were that feeling like us. Duck was, he was lit. Yeah, he was big. Lit, bro, lit. He was big, bro. I ain't gonna cap. He was yeah. super big. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, bro, like, this a major ass placement for me. Like, this was my first placement as a producer with a major artist. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Damn. So I ain't gonna lie, bro. We was excited, bro. We went, we went out, nigga. We went and got two bottles of Remy. We was smoking, bro. We fuck got faded. We was just happy as hell because. Like, nigga, it seemed like all our hard work was finally, like, catching up to us. You know what I'm saying? Progress. Like, this was just shit that we was doing regularly. Like, we would send packs of DJ Mill ticket, like, literally every fucking day. Every other day, he was calling, asking for packs. You're and we was about beat packs? Just to go, yeah, beat packs. Some people don't... They, yeah, we were sending them beat packs yeah, and shit. Yeah. Like, 10, 10 beats at a time, you know what I'm saying? Just getting shit to them, you know? So, it seemed like everything that was finally... Like, everything at this moment, bro was just coming into fruition for me. Like, everything. Everything I was doing, being on television, um, going viral, um, my music, producing, me linking in with all of these motherfucking, um, these artists and rappers and shit. You, you know what I'm saying? accumulated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. So, so, in your opinion, hard work pay off, though? Hell yeah. yeah. Hard work definitely pay off, especially when you're grinding to take yourself to the next level. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what the fuck gonna blow. That's yes, why I said just do everything. I ain't gonna lie. One time I was uh, kicking it with you on butter. I had seen that y'all recorded that song. Y'all was punching in. Uh -huh. It was crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I really, to me, I, I tell butter all the time. It was like an experience I never seen. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was experience. But it's like that's your that's your recording process naturally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. especially especially with me and butter. Like we like we like going off of our heads. Like mm -hmm. anything that we feel at the moment, mm -hmm. that's what we gonna say. You know what I'm saying? It feel it feel better. Mm -hmm. Like we don't write none of our shit down. I I can tell you personally, folks don't write none of his shit mm -hmm. down. Like he don't write at all. You I know what I'm saying? I seen both y'all not write. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like some some like like music that I like some of my music that I record, like, if it's something that I wanna like really put like emphasis on or like something i really want like put some importance on onto the song i'm gonna write it like especially mm -hmm. if i'm talking about like black power or some shit like that but if it's just like regular r&b music or trap music i freestyle everything it just feels more genuine mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. shit that we going through shit that we say net regularly every day shit that we talk about every day i put it into i put it into music even some some of our situations in our songs it's shit that we put on music. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might be something that Butter went through that I'll make a song about, or it'll be something that I went through that Butter make a song about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just our everyday situations, our everyday life. This is how we make music. But, um, 
you know, we was we was making we was making a real heartfelt song, man. Um, pretty much, I was telling folks that I wanted him to do some different shit. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody know Bud for doing the trap shit, you know, the drill shit, and um, I wanted to push him to do something that was just completely different, completely out of his lane. I told him, I said, bro, I was like, I was like, everybody know you for trap. Everybody know you for the gang, you know. For the I'm bullshit. Saying? From mm -hmm. from you know, from mm -hmm. the trap drill music. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but And I ain't saying the song bullshit, I'm saying just the you know, yeah. he, he wanted he he wanted he a different type, you yeah, know. Exactly. He I ain't like that neither. I'm an older nigga. He he a different type of nigga. He sure he wild, but go ahead though. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? He, he, and he cleaned his image up though. Yeah, I told him I was like, bro, I want you I want you to make something for those for the white people. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Shout mm -hmm. out to the white folks because they support our music. They buy our music. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, I was like I was like, when we walk into, when we go to these big venues and you got all these fans coming out for you, bro, like, it's going to be good to have some rock star shit for you. So we made this, you know, it was like a rock Juice World type song. Mm. And when we made this song, bro, mm. it was so... I heard that song. I we, love that song, We feel bro. it. You know what I'm saying? We felt it. You know what I'm mm. saying? We both felt it. And the whole time, I wasn't even going to get on the song, but Butter mm. told me, he's like, bro, I want you on the song. Mm -hmm. He's like, bro, he's like... Because I was humming. I was harmonizing mm -hmm. with it, trying to, like, get Butter to say what I was saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Butter was like, all right, bro, just help me help me with this song because I don't know what, what direction I'm going in. Mm -hmm. So the whole time, the shit that I was saying, Butter, I had Butter sing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, sing it and say it. I wrote his verse for him. But he told me he wanted me on the song, but he wanted me to say what he was feeling. Mm. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll do that. You know what I'm saying? That's hot. And um, you know, he spoke he spoke on his baby mama, you know what I'm saying? Like R. P. Destiny. I remember that. I know that song. You boy. know what I'm saying? And it was like everything that he was feeling, I gave it to them on that song. Well, you mama. know what I'm saying? And it was just a real hard part. So that was one of that's literally one of our best like R and B like rock songs. You know what I'm saying? Um I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like me and Butter have made some dope ass music, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's not about like you know. Of course, I don't. I don't produce. I don't produce most of his diss tracks that he sent out. You know what I'm saying? Adam Twenty Two. You know what I'm saying? King Yella, Famous Richard. The latest song that he just did yeah. with this Yella and Famous Richard and all of them. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, we gonna talk about that, but go ahead. Talk. Say what you're saying. Oh God, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I produced all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, it's not that it's not the fact that I I got beef with them. I don't got beef with them. You know what I'm saying? But this is art to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I like the era of like hip hop music where it was like motherfuckers could like battle rap, go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like that's to me, that's what Butter was doing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like oh I'm finna drill these niggas and kill these niggas. It was mm -hmm. like no, I'm finna. It's music. I'm, nah. I'm battle rap. Okay, if I said the music is over with, because you know it was like saying? yeah, type shit. Like that. That's I how did. I felt. Butter was coming. I, I, I feel like he was coming on some battle rapper type shit. Like.
something that it was like I was just trying to do. It was just like, oh, this is a part. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 also a piece or a way to get in, you know, to the industry as much as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sure. for me recording myself, making me like I record all my own music. So for me recording myself, I understood how to be an engineer. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how that com- comes about uh, as as me being an engineer. You know what I'm saying? But more so me producing. Me producing is like how I'm like, okay, well, shit, I'll produce a beat for you, you know, and I'll record you on my beat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sure. that, that put money in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, you know, it's just, it's just, I feel like there's really just like a hustling mentality. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like anything where I can get money from, I'm going to get money from it. And then anywhere where I can get recognition or, you know what I'm saying, notoriety, I'm going to eat off of that That's as well. That's your line. You yeah. got to because you're going up. Exactly. We see it. I see it. I ain't gonna lie. People gonna see it on the real when they get to look at get the get when y'all get to put all them songs out that y'all did. The people seeing that catalog, it's like, nah, this nigga different. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You different, brother. I'm gonna keep it tall with you. You oh, really, God. I ain't gonna. Lie. I heard you sing live. You can really mm-hmm. can sing. I ain't gonna even put you on the spot, but it's like you really can sing. You really can rap. Mm-hmm. I seen you freestyling, and I seen you make a beat. Mm-hmm. Probably multiple times. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, you 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 know what you know you. You you know you got talent, but you humble. Okay. But it's like yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just keeping it. I'm just I'm just I'm speaking for you right now on the real because I ain't. What got you say you speak, you were singing since you was young when you started rapping? Oh, I started rapping when I was like. Like eleven, like eleven, man. Um, mm. I remember I got in trouble for it too. Mm. I was um, I was listening to Tupac. Wonder mm. why they call you bitch? And I was like rewriting the words to fit my own words. Mm-hmm. And uh, my fucking my stepmama came in the room and found my notebook and found me cursing in my notebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I got in trouble for it. That's when I started rapping for real, for real. You said you were 11? Yeah, I was yeah. 11. Yeah. And I'm um, just listening to Tupac and, like, rewriting his words. And, like, that's why, that's really why I feel like I, like, that was my first, like, remix song. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I hadn't, I didn't record it, of course, because it wasn't, like, something that I was, like, trying to pick up too hard. But it was just, like, I was just really interested in rapping because of school. School is, like, like, I was on the back of the bus rapping i was at the lunch table rapping because every all my peers was doing it that's where i really picked it up at you know what i'm saying and it was just a fun thing at first rapping was just fun singing was like i just naturally knew how to do it you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so when i started rapping for real i started recording myself i had a laptop i had a i was like one of the first people in my neighborhood to have a mac laptop and I was recording myself on fucking Garage Band. Had this cheap ass mic that plugged into my fucking laptop. The cheap ass mic. And I was mixing myself down and just putting out music on a CD. Mm. And I was selling my CDs to my like to my homies and like people in school and shit. So that's where I started rapping. Mm. Like for real, for real. That's what I I was recording my music before I was like going to studios and shit like that for real for real. And of course it didn't sound like the best. But it was like good it's for being at that time. Give you inspiration, like yeah. I'm bro. I'm kind of people have probably heard it because when I heard you, I'm like this nigga. Even right now, you humble, but it's like this nigga Rob was here. I'm, you know what I'm saying, Thank I'm you. telling you the truth. Like, man, listen, <laughs> listen, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like the talent is there, and the work ethic there too. Because I be seeing you working. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. So I was like, I'm just, I'm trying to give you your. I ain't gonna say I'm, I ain't nobody to give you your problems, but I'm saying just. On the outside looking in, I'm just speaking for you. Like, Thank I ain't gonna lie. I, I see it, brother. I see it, brother. Thank you know what I'm saying? So now, so so you started singing when you was younger. You started rapping when you was about 11. You know, when you start producing, the, you start pre- producing the beats around the time you start rapping? Nah, nah, hell nah. Uh, I was doing a lot of YouTube beats when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of YouTube beats, we got downloading you. them and Talk shit. Talk about what got you into producing, if you could. Yeah, what got me into producing was... I started taking producing seriously when I was like 
19, 20. Mm-hmm. And um, at this time, like, I was sampling. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even really know how to sample. So what I would do was I would record the pe- I would record anything that I like from a microphone from to the speaker. Mm. I would hear something that I like. And then I would loop it on GarageBand. Mm. Like, it don't matter what the fuck it was. It could have been a woman singing. And I looped it on Garage. You looped it? Hold on. Yeah. This, this, this bitch go back. I ain't gonna lie. What you saying right now, I'm gonna say this while I just going back. We're gonna cut this off. But it's like, what you saying right now, you gonna inspire. I'll be trying to teach my sentence. I'm gonna t- watch this interview with Darion. Mm-hmm. Watch this interview. Go ahead. I'm, I'm telling you, like, I'm going to make his ass watch it. I'm going to sit your ass down. You, can't watch, you ain't watching no YouTube. You want, when I get him this weekend, I'm going to watch this. Oh, God. I'm telling you, bro. I'm a woman. I'm, I'm keeping the real, bro. I'm a woman. You tell me don't whoop, I'm going to whoop his ass. I ain't protecting him. Yeah. It's not, but it's like, I'm going to whoop his ass, but watch this now. Like, folks, he been through it. You know what I'm saying? Why, do, do what he doing. Don't yeah. do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you're going you, you gonna to make it, bro. And, and we're going to get to rap a lot of shit after this. Go ahead. Okay. All right, yeah. yeah. But but I would, like, just loop. You're going to make it. Thanks, man. You know what my mama you is. Go ahead. And I would just loop what I would hear. Yeah. And I would make a beat on the laptop, like, the keys. The keys, the, the, the letters was the keys on the laptop. Mm. And I would make a beat with the letters on the laptop mm. behind this sample that I would record with my microphone to the, the speaker. Mm. And that's when I started really producing. Like, that's when I knew, I'm like, damn, this is my beat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this something my shit. that this I original. created. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And then, um, yes, like, sir. I started I started per- perfecting my craft after I started getting, um, like, like, access to, like, different programs. You know what I'm saying? Like on, on like, you know, computers and shit like that. I started perfecting my craft, making beats differently, playing the piano. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I like I know how to play the piano. You know what I'm saying? My background is playing the piano. And um Were you learning that were you learning to play the p- piano? Actually, man, I learned it I just learned it on my own, bro. I okay. picked it up. Um, my father had an old ass piano mm. that he gave to me. That's fire. And um I I just I took I took piano lessons. Mm-hmm. So I know how to read music, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and um, That's fire. you know what I'm saying like it, it. I mean, it don't it don't take much to make some, a beat on the piano. You know what I'm saying? It's really just a few keys. Nah, you, know you what saying, saying that though, but for me, you saying that, but for me, I don't know how to play the piano. When I look at people play the piano, it's like amazing to me. It's like how you know how to which sound is this? So that's. That's a talent in itself, in my opinion. Oh, but go ahead, though. You you might not you might might you, you ain't looking at it like that because you know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Now I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was just like I didn't know how to play the piano when I first started playing the piano. It was just like I'm gonna be honest with you. I went to YouTube tutorials and I would learn how to play the song that mm. I wanted to play. Mm. And I started picking that shit up, and my father started realizing like how easy it was for me to play the piano just from like watching on YouTube how to play a certain song. Yeah. So I would like learn how to play certain songs that I really liked or songs that was popular, and I was playing them on the piano. So my my father put me in piano lessons, and I hated it. Mm-hmm. Gee, I hated piano lessons, mm-hmm. bro. Like they made me go to that shit two times a week, and I was sitting there for like three hours. And after I would leave the piano, after I would be done with my piano lessons, my fingers would be cramped up, hurt. Mm, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because they making me put my fingers in certain positions yeah. to learn how to play like certain chords and shit like that. I hated it, bro. But it was something that I, I appreciate. I appreciate it now because he honed my craft as a parent. Mm. As a parent, he honed mm. my craft to be able to make me better today. So now... I could play the piano. I could play the piano for hours and my shit not going to hurt. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I could play the piano. I could play different songs. I could play different keys, different chords to make to make music. So for the youth, because we talk, I ain't going to lie, we talking to the youth because a lot of people think that they got to slide and clap a nigga and all this mm-hmm. to get on. You sound, you, you sound with rap a lot Midwest right now. You, mm-hmm. you locked in with them. You locked in with rap a lot, basically. So it's like whole time, a lot of people think you got to do all this shit to do that. But it's like really...
they rock with me because I am I am talented. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm not like everybody else on you the are. label. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um I also have a single deal with them. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? For my single on the flow with uh Queen Will Come and Ink Dog. Mm-hmm. Uh I ain't gonna lie, bro, like they uh J Prince Jr. did not like my music. Mm. He didn't like my music. That's bro. the one that run um, Mob Ties. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Talk he about it. He did not like my music, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he wasn't fucking with the R and B for real, for real. I really feel like I really feel like if if I was there to play my music to him and like get him to feel what I was coming from, he probably would have fucked with it more. But like when they heard when he heard my music. And they was like shopping like artists out to him. He was like, I don't want to hear this shit. Mm. Turn it off. You know what mm. I'm saying? So it was like, for me, it was a blow. Because I'm like, damn, bro. I'm like, I feel like my shit not good enough to be on the level of these of these people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For these for these like moguls. Like That's how I look at Jay Prince Jr. I look he at him is. as a mogul. He is a mogul. He a, he a son of a mogul. No, but no. he is a mogul he, too because he, he got people in position too. Type oh God. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Ahead, and, 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 and I ain't going to cap, bro. After that... But he come from the old man. But yeah. I get it though. I get, I get what you're saying. This is my opinion, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. No, but I ain't going to lie, bro. Like Even after, after I was told that they wasn't fucking with my music, I'm like, damn, bro. It took a little while for them to kind of like lean. That they're the ones that control rap a lot Midwest. I want to ask you one more question, and yeah. then I want you to elaborate. But how did you come across folks that's anyway? Um, Prince and Easy, the um, J Prince Jr. How how you come across his death? Prince and Easy, mm-hmm. Prince and I mean not Prince and Easy, Prez and E, Prez Easy. Where, where mm-hmm. is this going? stupid. This is like every five minutes. Like no, we, we good. good. Right, like ten minutes. We good. Mm-hmm. How you came across they desk, you said? Yeah. Present Easy was playing our music. All of the artists that they had on the Rap A Lot Mail West, they was playing our music to them. Mm-hmm. Like, trying to figure out, like, who would they would be willing to, like, invest in? Who would they be willing to, like, break out as an artist? You know what I'm saying? And that's how my music came across their desk. They had all my music. Well, they had all my music that was out or that I wanted to shop to the label. You know what I'm saying? Rap a lot. And, um, like, th- it was just like when they played my shit, J. Prince Jr. was not fucking with it. He mm. wasn't fucking with my shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? But everybody else was rapping. I was the only person that was singing. And then, like, besides, like, Chanel Nicole, shout out Chanel Nicole, she was also singing, but she was rapping too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I was rapping, but I didn't want them to give them my rapping music. I wanted them to give my R&B because mm-hmm. everybody else was rapping. You know what I'm saying? But when they played my shit for him, he said he wasn't fucking with it. Mm. So it was a blow for me because I'm like, damn, bro, like, this my opportunity to do something or to even be, like, at a at a height with Drake, at a height with Finesse two times. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. These are the people that, like, they are major, they are major, like, like label holders, like not label holders, but like they're mate, they're a major part of the label that could, you know, what I'm saying, like potentially change my lifestyle because I'm I'm at I'm at their height of music, you know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. So it kind of it kind of hurt me, you know what I'm saying? It kind of hurt me when I felt like they wasn't like like taking a full advantage of somebody. That one, I had, I was the only person a part of the label at the time when I when I worked when I started working with them, that had a blue check on Instagram, I had a million followers, mm. like I had a huge ass fan base, like my music was busting, I was making money off of social media, like I'm the only artist at the time that was doing this shit, and I felt like if they would have embraced me and just said I'm taking on Darion and Don. Like we would we would we wouldn't even fucking be here right now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that was just me thinking. Personally. I wouldn't even ever met you. So you know I'm blessed. Saying? I'm blessed. Not that's, I ain't gonna lie. You gonna be blessed in the long run because who you you, you your talent, bro. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, bro. Like I'm a snob. I be telling buddy that I'm a snob of music. 
I like the shit he be doing. I like, and I know that you behind the production and shit. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I seen y'all work, bro. But it's like for me, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Um, I'm a snob. I'm a snob of music, but you, you, like you said, you wouldn't even be here right now. You wouldn't even be on my camera right now. You wouldn't right. even be fucking with corporate cartel. You'd be somewhere on Vlad, right. and, and you gonna be on Vlad. But it's like at the end of the day, we start from the bottom up. Yeah. But it's like, but it's like. People don't see it, but people gonna see it. Yeah, that's I, that's how I feel. I promise you. Go ahead. People yeah. gonna see it. I promise you. Uh, like, and I just not I to just, say too much. Man. No, I just I just took I just took for what it was, bro. Because every situation was not for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I had to be able to take that as a man on the chest. Yeah. Like everything that God throws at me, I take it with my chest out and my head up. You know what I'm saying? I I understand that everything isn't going to blow for me the way it's going to blow. You know what I'm saying? But now, like me, I'm a mogul. I have my own record label. I can sign an artist if I want to. You know what I'm saying? I'm a comedian. I'm an actor. You know what I'm saying? I'm everything as that an artist should be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, more things are happening for me that I took the longer road, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, it was a little bit harder. It was a little bit tougher. It was a little bit of ass kissing along the way. If I get on today, if I make a million dollars today, I owe no one. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I owe no one. I don't owe anybody. I don't... You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody say, hey, here, Darion, here go $20,000, here $10,000, here $5,000. Ain't nobody ever did nothing for me to say, oh, I put Darion on. No, I put myself on. You know what I'm saying? I was out there on, on, on Hollywood Boulevard performing hours and hours and hours in the fucking heat, meeting Mark Wahlberg. I was just finna say that, bro. I sent you on... Yo, social media with Mark Wahlberg and some more motherfuckers. Yeah, bro. I see you on I see you on that social media with Mark Wahlberg and some more motherfuckers. Like, talk about it. You you talking about it, but I just yeah. wanna. I yeah, just man, wanna, like, I just wanna confirm what you're saying because it's a fact. Like, go follow folks. He got that shit at the end of the interview. We gonna highlight his social media. We go here. Yeah, know. man. You know, just Mark Wahlberg, fucking Nipsey Hustle family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fucking big boys neighborhood. Fucking, you know, yeah. Wale. You know, Wale played me. Wale played me when I first met him. And he was one of my favorite artists. But it was kind of like one of those situations like where it's like your, your, your idols become your rivals type thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna lie. He treated the fuck out of me. He treated me like I was a nobody. So, you know what I'm saying? I just took that shit on the fucking chest. Mm -hmm. But it was just like me grinding, me out being out there rapping to the to random people on LA on Hollywood Boulevard right in front of the fucking Foot Locker. If anybody been to LA, you know where the fucking Foot Locker is on 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 Hollywood Boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Like I rapped out there every like uh, every single day for like 3 weeks straight mm. just making bread. Me and my homie King Vibe and you know what I'm saying? I did that shit. I met all those people, all the famous people, all the motherfuckers that was like on TikToks and Instagram and YouTube making funny videos. I met all those people out there and all those people rocked me as a, as an individual. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I was talented yeah. and be and I was talented, talented enough to be able to freestyle on beats, on everyday beats that we listen to on music and sing on it. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, I just want to say like for me personally, like without with without this like come up without this fucking grind and effort to make myself bigger and wanting to be bigger i wouldn't be able to say like damn bro like keep up hope you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like i wouldn't be able to say that because like i did it you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying i did it and see, only because of god i was able to do it you see it for yourself yeah do you have a 9 to 5 now or are you living off of your your grind no, I don't have a nine to five job. So, 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 so you living off your grind. So yeah, it's bro. hope. Cause, cause I, I want, I want people to see that. Cause yeah. a lot of people won't understand that, brother. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like no, I'm I make, I, you I, inspiration. I, you really not to cut you off. Mm -hmm. You really inspiration to the youth, bro. And I want to keep implementing that and keep re reiterating that. Go ahead, though. Yeah. yeah. No, I I make I make money off Distro Kid. Mm -hmm. Every month I get paid off Distro Kid. Mm -hmm. Every month I get paid off YouTube. Every month I get paid off of Twitter. 
Instagram, mm-hmm. Facebook, mm-hmm. all of these things just for me being myself, making whether it's skits or music videos or you know what I'm saying, like producing music for other artists. I get paid off mm-hmm. of the, all of that in one like lump sum every mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. And although the money isn't the best money, it's you know still enough it's money enough. where I can live. Exactly. I don't got to go clock in and right. be a slave to this fucking company I don't. that could find me. Because, you know, you see all the companies, they find 2,500 motherfuckers, 15. You mm-hmm. see that? You see that right now? Yeah. In the end of, yeah. So it's like, I ain't going to lie about it. You inspiration to me as well. Because I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, as what I call, what I call what I'm doing is emancipation. Yes. And in and, and order to create emancipation, you have to be financially emancipated. You have to be mentally emancipated. You have to be spiritually emancipated. You know what I'm saying? These are all the things that as black people, we're not wait, able wait, wait, to... Wait, 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 wait. Spiritually emancipated. This, this, this is going to catch the... You're going to catch it. I don't want, I don't want the... I got you. Yeah. Um, mentally, the, spiritually emancipated. Go ahead and start from you. Okay, I got you. What I'm doing is, is called emancipation. Mm-hmm. And in order for you to be emancipated fully, you have to be financially emancipated, mentally emancipated, spiritually emancipated. Without these things, as black people, we will never be able to fully be free of being controlled. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's hard. It's harder when you're doing it on your own. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't have somebody to clock into and they're going to give you a paycheck every week for your time. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's better when it's your own time. You spend the time that you want to spend on this to make the money that you want to make and to be free and be emancipated through the things that you love doing. It's recurring. You once, know what you get ro- once you get it flowing, like I, I, I'm believing that you got it flowing, it's recurring. All right, okay. We don't need these people. We don't. We don't. You know what I'm saying? And not to just. Not the like, shit on not, not the shit on not the mm. shit on the people above. Mm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. everything has some type of scheme, pyramid scheme to it. Yeah. Even my own, even my music has some type of pyramid scheme to it. Because mm. without the people that's up under me, listening to me as supporters, as followers, I would not be at the top of my pyramid to mm-hmm. be able to move forward and to break into other dimensions and realms, so that I can be more emancipated than I am now. There's years of there's years of slavery that's built within my mind. Mm. And I cannot break that until I break through doors, until I break through realms, until I break through dimensions that I have not been able to touch yet. Through my brothers, through Butter, through J Man, through whoever I come across in, in my life and in, in my dimension. I sent you on DJU, he a big ass platform. Yeah. I sent you working, bro. Yeah, you I sent you in positions type shit, so I'm not, I'm not, even if you blessing my shit, like you blessing my shit, so I respect it, brother. Oh, God, like without, without all of these people, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I mean, with, with these people, I am able to break through more mm-hmm. than I am, you know, in, into my realm, my, per, my own personal realm. And that's why I take every situation and every relationship and all my brothers and my brotherhood. I take it so dearly. I, I I keep it so close and dear to me because without them, I would not be able to break. You know what I'm saying? Break mm-hmm. through. You know, and I think that for the youth and for and for my people, you know what I'm saying? There's there is a there is a time where coming together makes sense. It's not just about how much money we're gonna make together. It's about how many people are you going? How many people's lives are you going to change through the shit that you're saying? Mm-hmm. You know and what I'm doing, saying? And doing, cause and you're doing, because you're doing a lot. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Or, or like highlighting to these mm-hmm. people. You know what I'm saying? I always talk. I always talk to folks in them. I always talk to Butter in them. I be like, bro, y'all gotta watch what y'all are doing because y'all have a y'all have a generation of people watching y'all, and they will feel like if I do what they're doing. I will be able to break through. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily the right way all the time. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm. So for me personally, I feel like I want to be able to do something in a different route. That's why you don't hear me dissing people. Now, I done sent out a few disses. Don't get me wrong. I done sent out a few disses mm-hmm. like like dissing like Barbara's son. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Whatever that uh, name is. Uh, dude from... Uh... 
What's that nigga? DC, name, he bro? from DC. Yeah, uh, the dude from DC. And, and Glizzy. And Glizzy, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I heard that. I heard that. That was you know hard too. Sent yeah. out a diss to, to Ann Glizzy. Sent out a diss to DDO Osama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When he diss ducking them. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like, you're from the rack. It's yeah. like it's offensive you know to you. But, yeah. but it's for me personally, bro. Like it wasn't nothing that I have like against them personally. You standing on business. You know what I'm saying? They, they do the same thing. This hip hop. Yeah, it's hip hop. If, 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 if it went the other way, they would have the same. The same thing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I stand on what the fuck I stand on because it's what I believe in. You know what I'm saying? Even Mama, Mama Duck wasn't fucking with the disc mm -hmm. when I sent it to her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was me showing her like I'm gonna stand up. For duck, yeah. For what he said, he regardless, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Don't nobody else gotta send out this. Ain't nobody else send out no this, but I did. You know what I'm saying, and that made me stand out. You know, for for both for both people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying for Barbara Son, Aunt Glizzy, and Didi Osama. You know what yeah. I'm saying. Whether they heard it or not. You know what I'm saying? They it's, heard it's, it. it's here. It's, believe it's that. near. It's, you know, it's here and there or there. But believe it. Believe it. They heard it. I ain't, I ain't trying to. Boston, but Chicago <laughs> is one of the, you, you know, Chicago. Yeah. It's like the the hub of. I don't want to say the bullshit, but it's the hub of what's going on. People adopting the style, this and that, and the third. I ain't from Chicago. I'm from the suburb, North mm -hmm. suburb. I'm up the street, but mm -hmm. it's like at the end of the day, I'm keeping it tall. I know that. That's why I tapped in with niggas like y'all. Yeah. You know I'm saying, go ahead though. Talk yeah, about you know it. what I'm saying. And yeah. and you know, I feel like, you know, me personally, I'm I'm for pushing the peace. Mm -hmm. I'm for pushing that piece. I love what Tay Savage and them is doing. You know what I'm saying? I love what Jay Main doing. Me I too. love, Me too. you know, them <clears throat> stepping out and and being something different for the hood. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it's like sometimes when blood is shed, when there's like shit that you cannot take back, like things can never be peaceful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I have to understand that. And I know that everything can't change due to what we want. You know what I'm saying? So as a man, the only thing that I can do is just change and spark the interest in the mindset of the next person that's the watching youth, this interview. The youth gonna watch it. You, know you, you gonna you gonna be able to you not not the, you gonna you gonna influence grown motherfuckers too because you gave me inspiration. The shit I see, I don't got the talent you got, but you inspired me. So I know you can inspire grown motherfuckers, but you wanna inspire the youth as well. Mm -hmm. Like that's really the impressionable. They minds are more impressionable than ours and all that type of shit. You get what I mean? Yeah. Now look though, now we talking about your talent. We talked about your mute, your uh, R and B. Wait, I'm gonna see. We're gonna wrap this up right now, but I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go just you get this question. I'm gonna talk about your, what you got drop. We talked about your R and B. Mm -hmm. We talked about your rap producing. But you also you, you you that's multi that's multi talented in that order right there. Mm -hmm. But then we got you a comedian. You got comedic as mm -hmm. you know aspirations and, and aspects to your character. So it's like oh time I want you to highlight that. Like do you mind if I highlight that? Yeah. All right. I'm mama Darian um Darian Adana slash um. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, 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 I'm finna make it. I'm finna make it connect. I just I, my, my, I don't, Slash Pimp Daddy Don, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I got Pimp Daddy Don on there. My interview fucked up. We did an interview before we did yeah. fucked up. I had a bogus camera, a bogus memory card, or whatever. But it's like old time though. You get funny aspects to you too, comedic aspects to mm -hmm. to you as well. So it's like get you some about that. Where it's like it ain't got to <laughs> be one lane. You oh, got yeah. four lanes at least. Yeah, it's so many lanes. It's so many lanes that you're that you're able to as as black people. Mm -hmm. We are just naturally like talented. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see that in anybody, bro. Like, I, I like to highlight like shaky. I like to highlight corporate. You know what I'm saying? I like to highlight. You know what I'm saying? Um, fucking skin bone. You Go know higher than that, even Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox type you know shit. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, motherfuckers, bro, yeah, motherfuckers yeah. are able to do more than just be like. A regular, a regular artist or just a regular comedian, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you, you can put yourself into, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's why, like, as my character, Pimp Daddy Don, like, that's something that was just a joke in the beginning. But now, 
if more people fucking know Pimp Daddy Don and they know Dariana Don. You know what I'm saying? Like people, like I can walk in like Dariana Don and I'm gonna be chill. But if I walk in fucking, if I walk anywhere and as Pimp Daddy Don, motherfuckers is laughing, giggling, coming up to me and asking for pictures because they know exactly who the fuck Pimp Daddy Don is because of all the people I worked with. Through Pimp Daddy Don, you know what I'm saying? Social media made the word is big. Yeah. Talk about it. Go ahead, you bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it 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 broke me out. You know what I'm saying? It created another fan base and another lane for me that I can't even cap. Some of my fans don't even come to me for music. Some of my fans come for me come to me just for like a comedic relief. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> I love it, bro. I love it because it's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can be different and not judged on, like, me being funny or just me being an artist. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, that's how I look at it, man. Like, I feel like for anybody that wants to do it, they should. Mm-hmm. If don't, you, don't. Because cause you know what? I, I want to cut you off, but I want to add on to what you're saying. A lot of people would be looking at it like, uh, I got to prove this to this person, that this to that person. But it's like, you really just got to do what you want to do. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, people going to hate regardless. <laughs> Go out for it. We got we got one life to live type shit. Oh, God. Yeah, talk about that, like, on the real. Because you, you doing it, and it's like, I want people to know that, bro. I ain't going to lie. Like, I, I'm going to say it like this. I'm going to say it like this, man. Being yourself, it seems like it's the hardest thing now. Mm-hmm. Like, because everybody looks at how everybody else is making money. You know what I'm saying? Even for myself, bro. Like, I done seen <clears throat> some of my peers do some shit that I was so scared to do. And they making millions of dollars mm-hmm. off of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. um, damn, bro. Like, if I wasn't scared to do that shit, I'd be in their same position. You know what right. I'm saying? And now, if I do it, I'm going to look like I'm copycatting or some shit. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to ever do that. I want to do something that I feel like if I do it, I'm doing it because I wanted to do it. And yeah. I didn't, I didn't think about the money about it. I just thought about it, and I just said, okay, I'm gonna just do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And whatever happens, happens with it. You know what I'm saying? Things that I didn't never want to go viral went viral. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, well, shit, maybe I should do this a little bit more because it's it's easier, and it was just effortlessly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that check rolling in. So I, I created, to motherfuckers. Yeah, go ahead. I just, I created my own lane. I created mm-hmm. my own own lane with. Com- like being a comedian, rapping, singing. I don't sound like anybody. I don't look like anybody. Mm-hmm. I can do what the fuck I want to do, and no one can say that I took that from them or I got the idea from yeah. them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's all me. You know what I'm saying? I and I wasn't scared to be me yeah. on, about on music or comedian, being a comedian. No one else in Chicago does what I do. I'm about for that. And that's why I feel like I'm such a threat because... Like, I do what I do on a high level, and it's effortlessly. You know what I'm saying? Music. I do it on a high level that people wish they could do it on. But for me, I'm thinking like, hey, man, I've been doing this shit for 10 plus years, nigga. Like, this regular. You know what I'm saying? Even making, like, hit R&B songs or hit trap songs or funny-ass skits. Like, I've been doing this shit my whole fucking life. So it's like, nigga... I've trained myself for this. God has given me talents for this since I was a child to be able to do what I'm doing on such a high level and being so effortlessly and people wishing that they could do it on the way that I do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, I respect it. A thousand percent, brother. I ain't gonna lie. Damn, I got like a couple qu- I'm, 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 I'm gonna wrap it up though because we have been talking about this our first one, but this ain't our last one. You get what I'm saying? We locked in. You already know that. Oh, God. So, so it's like whole time though. Um, okay, we speak about your talent. You spoke about your history. I really want you to, you know, get a youth a little inspiration, and then I want you to shout out your socials so motherfuckers will know where to find you at. Mm-hmm. Then we're gonna get into when the music is dropping, all right, or where it's dropping, and type of shit. Yeah, all right. So, my own personal aspect, on this is you need to start, start when that shit roll, okay. <clears throat> Start, start now. All right, cool. So my own aspect for inspiration for the youth is, man, I don't like to be like everybody else that say like some regular ass shit. You know what I'm saying? But I will say, fuck friends, 
Fuck bitches. Fuck niggas that don't fuck with you for you. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers are temporary. <laughs> they are temporary, bro. And when you're down, they will not be with you. When it's sunny, everybody will be in your face. So do what the fuck do what the fuck you want to do. If people don't support it, fuck them. I don't give a fuck if it's your mama, your daddy, your sister, your best friend, your bitch. If they don't support it, fuck them. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of people out there that will. That's that's in this world that would love to be a part of your team. That would love to support you. That would love to push you to that next level. I've spent my whole life going in and out of people's lives and having people coming in and out of mine because I was trying to fit them or make them feel good about what I was doing or riding people's coattails. I did it. Mm-hmm. I did it all. I fucking did it all, bro. I rode people's coattails. I wanted to be a face for myself because mm-hmm. I am a face. Yeah. I'm a mogul. I'm a businessman. I'm a comedian. I'm, I'm able to do more than just the regular individual, average individual. I'm not an average individual. And for my black people, for my black young people, y'all not a, y'all not average individuals mm-hmm. either. Y'all are amongst y'all are amongst the greats. And every person has the, the the ability to be that and be great and be a king and be above the next peer that you look up to. Mm-hmm. These people, these people in the industry, they have problems making music. Fucking, they got people writing for them. But the people like us, me, Butter, Duck, all the, all all of us, all of all of us that makes music on the on the levels that we do it. These motherfuckers in the industry wish they could make music like this mm-hmm. because it's so pure, it's so raw, it's so uncut. And when you're able to do that, you become a threat mm-hmm. because if they cannot control you through your music, they cannot control you. If they say, damn, this nigga can't make music, but he can sing his ass off. Mm-hmm. So I can I can have somebody, somebody else. Love you. Somebody, I can make somebody write something for him that the people are going to love. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can make him sound like however the fuck I want him to sound like. But if this man write his own music, he produces his own music, he sing his own music, he rap his own music, then what the fuck can I do for this artist? Mm-hmm. I can't do anything. And that's why they had such a problem with Duck. Duck ass was fucking their ass up in the industry because they could not do anything with him. They The only thing that they could do was give him money to drop music. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to do that. They don't. They don't want you to have so much control because guess what? That takes money out of their pockets. Mm-hmm. If they got a, they bill me for. It. They can't bill me for anything. If I if they if they give me two million dollars, they can't say, "Oh well, we paying for the studio session." No, I record my own music. No, we paying for the platinum studio, the platinum producers. No, I produce my own music. Yeah. Well, we playing for the 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 writers that have been writing music for 20, 30 years. No, I write my own music. Yeah. Yeah. So what anomaly at that point? Oh God. Now I can make music for Chris Brown. I can go make music for Rihanna. You were an anomaly at that point. They can't you know put their finger on it. So uh, just my inspiration for the youth. Yeah. Y'all just be yourself, man. Create create your own create your own um atmosphere of people that love you for who you are and fucking be great. Yeah. Whole time. Now what you said, I wouldn't even try to cut you off, but what you said it was inspiring me. So I wanted to throw my two cents mm-hmm. in. But it probably inspired the butter too, because he threw his two cents in, but we, we we fuck with it. I, I yeah. know I fuck with it. I, folks got to fuck with it because he's throwing this shit in. Now, whole time, though, you said where, where, where people can find you at, when your newest project. We're going to do that. Okay, yeah. Y'all can find me everywhere at Dariana Don, D-A-R-R-I-O-N, D-A-D-O-N. That's on everything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, SoundCloud, YouTube. Y'all can find me everywhere at that, man. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Dariana Don. Y'all find me when y'all type it in. Um, my newest music that's coming out. 
Um, I ain't gonna cap, bro. I I got so much music backed up, bro. I have over like 800 R&B songs mm. that I haven't dropped out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But more of my newer music is the music that I'm producing for my brothers. You know what I'm saying? So y'all make sure. I want to just highlight them. You know what I'm saying? If y'all hear Ooh, It's the Don on the beat, then y'all know it's me. You know what I'm saying? Happy. Go check out my brothers. Mm -hmm. Go check out Butter New Shit, bro. Uh, Reloaded. I produced it, man. Um, go check out Queen D, uh, her king, King Yellow Disc. Oh, yeah. And then Gotti got some new shit getting ready to come out. That's Duck Sister, man. It's called um, um, How I Feel. It's going to get ready to drop soon. And then... Um, Y'all just be look on the lookout for my new R and B shit, man. I, I got a project called um Damn, what the fuck is that project called? I dropped so much music, y'all, excuse me. No, nah, do your thing. Oh, it's called Don. The Don. No, it's just, just Don. called Don. D O N. Y'all can go right. check it out. That got that got a uh, feature with butter on it, Ink Dog, uh, Big Cat and Donna Mac. Mm. I got features with all of them because those are the closest people to me that I made music with that been holding me up for so long. You know what I'm saying? Respect. So I just gave them I gave them their own recognition on my on my project Gangsta. just to get them more, you know, light shit to shed more light on them. Gangsta. You know what I'm saying? So Gangsta. go get that man. Nah, definitely go get that. Go tap in with my boy, man. And then to wrap it up, man, give me a shout out, bro. You know what I'm saying? We oh man, y'all know what the fuck going on, man. It's your boy Dariana Don. We with Corporate Cartel Media. If y'all don't subscribe right now, I ain't gonna say we gonna smoke you. Crazy <laughs> though. No, no, but look though, go make sure y'all go subscribe to my boy, man. Mm -hmm. And if y'all want an interview, hit my man's up right now, bro. He got the best interviews in the city. Get into him, my boy. Corporate Cartel Media, Dariana Don. We out this bitch.